nightmares, a series of thoughts, images, and sensations that cause us in our sleep to feel negative emotion, to feel painful things like sadness, fear, despair, anger. Dreams serve us. Even nightmares serve us positively. But the sad truth of the matter is that sometimes dreams haunt us. They make us start our life off on the wrong side of the bed. And then, when this is the case, we need to deal with them directly. We've got to learn how to make use of our nightmares. Dreams are a direct reflection of what's going on with you vibrationally. The things you've been thinking and feelings you've been feeling in your waking life and what manifests in your reality are always a match. Your dreams are always a vibrational match to what you've been thinking and feeling as well. Anything you focus or pay attention to can manifest as a dream. Because you have no resistance in your sleep, you are not tensing yourself against the conditions of your life or condemning yourself or pretending things are different than they are. So you're able to see the reflection of your vibration exactly as it is. Your subconscious mind, things you don't know that you don't know, can be revealed to you. What does this mean for those of us who have nightmares? It means that in our waking life, we are under stress. We're chronically experiencing states of emotional duress and most likely emotional duress that we are either unaware of or don't know how to resolve. Sleepers dream about what they encounter in their real life. But here's the interesting thing about dreams. We are always going to experience the most direct vibrational match to whatever emotional state we are currently feeling. This means your mind will choose a structure for your dream that most closely resembles the feeling itself, regardless of whether that particular scenario or structure is real or seems not so real. What I mean is this. In your waking life, you might have a boss who you dread interacting with. This is a person where the minute you enter the room, you start feeling like crap. They make you feel powerless. They make you feel afraid. So what do you do in your waking life? You do anything you can to avoid this person. Now maybe you start having nightmares, and in that nightmare you encounter an alligator or a lion. And that alligator or lion is chasing you and attacking you. Obviously in your day-to-day -day life, especially if you live somewhere like Manhattan, you're not going to run into an alligator or a lion or a tiger, so you're thinking, how the hell is this an exact vibrational match to what I'm going through in my life? What it is, is that the way that that sensation feels, that interaction with your boss most closely resembles what it would feel like or seem like to run away from a predator. So in fact, that metaphoric image your brain has come up with of the alligator or the tiger or the lion is in fact just a symbolic representation of your boss. To understand dreams in general, I want you to watch my video on YouTube titled What are Dreams and How to Understand Them? In this video on dreams, I explained that life is essentially a learning hologram that facilitates universal expansion. This is the function of the perception of linear time and space. By seeing your vibration playing out in a dream, you can make amends to it. Dreaming helps, therefore, incorporate memory, solve problems, and process emotions. And nightmares are one of the best facilitators of resolution. They are simulated rehearsals of threat so that we will be prepared to survive if we continue to encounter a similar threat in our waking life. But what should we do with those nightmares? What should we do if our nightmares are causing us problems? Step one. Now this step that I'm about to provide you with is absolutely amazing. It's going to seem simple, but I have literally seen nightmares disappear completely from the lives of people who suffer from complex post-traumatic stress disorder just as a result of doing this particular process. So here's how it goes. After you have a nightmare, what you're going to do is to close your eyes, this is after you wake up, and you're going to consciously go back over every detail you can remember of that nightmare. Only this time, you are going to alter what happens in that nightmare so that it feels good. You're going to change the circumstance. You're going to change the people involved, the characters. Any aspect of that dream that doesn't feel good, you're going to change. For example, if I had a bad dream about being attacked by a dog, I may replay the dream and shrink the dog and have the dog disappear at the snap of my fingers. 
You have full artistic license here to alter the dream in literally any way that causes you to feel good. You could face and conquer a threat or alter the entire storyline. Don't consider what is possible or impossible, real or unreal. The more believable the resolution is to you, however, the better the result will be in waking life. By doing this particular practice, you are essentially providing yourself with resolution, which is the entire reason that the nightmare exists in the first place, because it's calling you to that resolution. It's essentially your inner being saying, look, this is a problem I'd really like to solve. So you're just getting on board and being conscious about it. Two, in my video titled Dreams and How to Understand Them, I set forth the process, which is my absolute favorite for dealing with dreams in general, especially nightmares. In this particular process, what you do is that you insert yourself into the perspective of every significant aspect of the dream, as if you were experiencing that perspective in real time in the now. Here's an example. I gave an example of how to do this process in that video on YouTube. I also made myself a guinea pig and wrote a blog where I applied this process to one of my own recurrent nightmares. If you're interested, you can look up these blogs titled Three Handprints and Handprints the Follow-Up. I'll include links to these in the description below this video. So apply this process to your own dream. Three, as you are falling asleep, I want you to deliberately take charge of your own mind and focus on things that feel good. The best way to treat this is almost like an imaginary set of flashcards, but flashcards that you live in as much vivid detail as possible. So for example, I might deliberately think of unicorns, what petting them might feel like to my hand, what it might smell like, what it might feel like emotionally to stand next to one in that fantasy reality where unicorns exist. Then I might imagine sitting in the sunlight on the beach. Then I might imagine a plate full of chocolate chip cookies. Then I might imagine a place I love to visit. Yet again, the sky is the limit on this one. Anything and everything that feels good to think about is game. Alternatively, using the same mental flashcard philosophy, you can replay your day that you just lived. But this time, what you're running through is all the positive things that happened from the moment you woke up to right now, the moment you have your head on the pillow. For example, replay a hug or a kiss you got. Replay the feeling of eating a meal you particularly liked, or what it felt like to read that positive email you received, or what a warm shower felt like against your skin. Those of us who have nightmares tend to ruminate. We tend to unconsciously replay flashcards of things that went bad throughout our day. We obsess over the negative and the way we felt when those negative experiences occurred. This bleeds over into dream life, so consciously doing the opposite is a powerful tool for us. Four, develop a unique, soothing ritual that will enable you to get into that mentality of now it's time to relax and go to bed. This is a relaxation ritual. And I want you to make this as unique to you as is possible. What really works for one person will be different than what really works for the next. For example, you may wish to take a warm bath or shower, paint, listen to music or guided meditations, or simply the sound of someone's reassuring voice. Breathe deeply to fully oxygenate your body. Lay in bed, starting with your toes, placing your focus on and tensing the muscle in every individual part of your body, holding the tension for about 11 seconds and letting go completely so as to deliberately create full body relaxation. If you create a ritual, what you're essentially doing is programming your brain. You're creating neurocircuitry where the brain says, okay, sleep is about relaxation instead of tension. That's really, really important because stress is what's creating the majority of your nightmares. So create one of these sleep time soothing rituals and it will be much less likely that you have nightmares. Five, don't cause arousal in your body right before you go to sleep and cut down on things that cause that arousal throughout the day. You have felt what it feels like to have your nervous system in a state of arousal. It feels like it's buzzing, the energy's moving all around. It doesn't necessarily feel very good. That leads to nightmares. So, for example, don't stare at computer screens, TV screens, or exercise or eat right before going to bed. Cut caffeine and sugar out of your diet. And don't watch scary or suspenseful movies. Doing things like this trigger the body into arousal instead of relaxation. 
They tell the mind and the body it's time to wake up and face a threat. This stimulation can predispose you towards nightmares. Look, I realize we're living in the modern age. Some of you are looking at this video thinking, there is no way in hell that I'm going to be able to go to sleep without looking at my computer right before I go to bed. If you're one of these people, what you can do is download an app that alters the way that the light is coming through your computer screen so that that light does not affect your circadian rhythms and tell your body it's time to wake up. Right now, my particular favorite app for this is called Flux, so I encourage you, if you're one of these people who just can't unhook from the screen, download this app and see what it does for your own circadian rhythm. 6. Let someone in on your nightmare, even if that's only the pages of a journal that you're letting in on that nightmare, just so that you can close it and put it away on a shelf. But it would be even better if you could actually involve a living person in your personal nightmare. Social support is a beautiful tonic for nightmares. It reduces stress to have someone witness the things we are subconsciously or internally struggling with. A nightmare is a symptom of a deeper emotional issue that needs to be made known to the conscious mind. Dreams are a doorway to your subconscious. If you struggle with nightmares, it is essential that in waking life you start to be proactive about reducing stress in your life. This may mean cutting back on workload, getting extra help here and there, seeing a therapist for help with problems that are causing you stress, or anything else that may help reduce your stress levels. You may benefit by watching my videos on YouTube titled How to Get Rid of Anxiety, A Natural Cure for Anxiety, How to Stop Worrying, and How to Stop Expecting the Worse, Catastrophizing. Use your nightmares as a tool for enhancing your level of self-awareness. It's a much better idea to approach yourself in this way rather than to just try to get rid of nightmares in their totality because resisting nightmares causes more stress and just creates more nightmares. Know that your mind is not against you. There's nothing wrong with you if you're having nightmares. And in fact, each nightmare holds valuable information for you, what you want in your life and don't want in your life, and situations which may need to be resolved. It is true that nightmares can create fear. But you don't have to fear them. Have a good week.